very fascinating. Now, this is a matchbox. Adjust the outer shell of the matchbox. We put two paper clips. You can see one paper clip here, one paper. Just popping up two millimeters and taped them. They've been taped so they don't slide. And woven a thread through them. And there are two, two, two little handles to hold the thread. And now this is the drawer, which I can, the more I put in, the closer the weight is to the thread. The further away now the weight is to the thread. I can adjust it. And that's it. Just hold the thread tight. Very fascinating motion. Much more weight on one side. So it's gravity and friction. Both at work. Fascinating motion. much more weight on one side. You can make it work. Well. Some pretty amazing paper toys. And, uh, but this is, uh, it's not with very simple ones. Uh, make a triangle from a square, a small triangle. Now this looks like the letter V, V for Van, V for Victory. It also looks like the ears of an animal. Uh, of a rabbit, if I just hold both these tears and fold this in the front, fold this to the back. So this is Mr. Rabbit in 30 seconds. Rabbit's mouth, rabbit's long ears, front legs, this is the tail. Hold the body just be below the, uh, hold the legs just below the body. Not on the body, otherwise you can't move it. Hold it here, grab the tail and just move the tail. Mm -hmm. but this is, kids have been making this for hundreds of years and all the Barbies and He-Man and Skullman, all these very sexist and violent toys will disappear. Not sustainable by Mother Earth. But hundreds of years down the line, kids would still be making toys like that. Very, very simple, very accessible. But there is a... Well, there's a paper, but Now this is a bird which kids in Japan have been making for 300 years. Well, you pull the tail and the wings flap. And the most common, three, it's documented history, 300 years. What we did, we just took the bird, here is a one centimeter of, of a old ball pen refill, plastic refill, which is the bush of the bearing. Put a pin inside this ball pen, which is the axle. This is like a paper helicopter. That's it. This is a fan tail bird, done about 25 years back. And you can just see this. Very amazing. It's aerodynamic, it's eco-friendly, it doesn't burn a hole in your pocket. And whether you are, you know, toys transgress age, whether you are a small baby, you're a kid, you're a boy, uh, you're an old man. <laughs> I, I sometimes get up at night and start playing with my own toys. <laughs> it's, they're fun, absolutely fun. <laughs> You can't buy this online anywhere. If you're clever, you can pick up a world refill and make 10 for your friends. Right? This is it. Very, very simple to do. But this is a gift from a girl in Hong Kong. The 2000 and... Very nice. Something like the rabbit. Now, this is a two minute. We're looking at... We work with little children. So they're not very intricate origami models. People... I've been to many origami exhibitions. People spend months and, you know, years making those elaborate things. I, I won't. Sometimes I give a challenge to my friends, or even that I work with children five minutes. A child should be able to do it in five minutes and get fun. And it should be dynamic in nature. That's very important. But this is just. It's like a butterfly. It just simulates the wings like a butterfly. Two minutes. Very nice. But this is taught to me by an origamist friend. And it's a one minute. Just 
paper, no glue, nothing. <laughs> the, there, is, there is a depression below which acts as a spring and brings it back. This is fascinating. This was designed by a mathematician at Harvard in 1920. Very well documented. There was a person, his name was Martin Gardner. He collated a maths puzzle for the Scientific American for 25 years. All these puzzles have been now collated into eight books. Maths puzzles, more puzzles, further puzzles, mathematical garden, mathematical circus. There's a whole chapter. This is called as a flex. It's made from paper and you can see that every time you flex, a different picture comes. We start with this. You see butterflies. Butterflies are insects. Insects are eaten by the frogs. Frogs are eaten by the snakes. Snakes are eaten by the eagles. So you can put a food chain. <laughs> Science is full of cycles and chains and sequences and it's a very nice way of flexing it. And you can do this a, a thousand times without the paper tearing. Ultimately the paper will give it, but you could just keep it. Fascinating, we just put another, we made several chains like this. Oh, this is, sorry, I'm showing you the wrong. And this is the food chain. No, this is the butterflies. Uh, eaten by the frogs, frogs eaten by the snakes, snakes eaten by the eagles, the food chain. This is the life cycle for butterfly. You can see that the, the male and the female are mating, the female lays eggs. From the egg emerges the caterpillar. First thing the caterpillar is very hungry, it's voracious. The first thing it does is to eat the eggshell itself. And it nibbles on the tender leaves, bloats, you know, fattens and bloats, and molds at a particular stage it becomes a pupa. This goes to sleep. And then some amazing transformations are taking place inside. From this pupa emerges the monarch butterfly, which once again. So you could have the, the water cycle, and you could have the life cycle of a frog. Look, science is full of cycles. And really, if you just had an A4 science paper like this. Now there's a film on our website, it's called as a flexible. You just have a piece of paper. It's a printed from one side, the printed side will be camouflaged. It will go in. So you can have a, a scale and a pencil. Three minutes, and you can just hold it. I've done for years with medicine school children, fourth class children, they, they, they just very, very, their fingers are so nimble, that's the right age. And then you're just limited by your imagination. This is not just limited to science. <coughs> if you were teaching history, the Mughal period, who was the first Mughal emperor? Write the name, write the dates, draw a picture. Who ascended the throne next? Who came next? Who came next? That would make history much more fascinating. You could repeat this in the Maratha period, right? Many. Flex. There are not too many dynamic paper models, but this is one of them. This is called this a 14 page unending book. It starts like this. You read two squares for this and a bit of blue. Three minutes by the watch to begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. This is the last page and the book. Three starts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14. One, two, three, four. Now, every child has a favorite story, which you can hear 50 times. They know it backside front, front side back, and not get bored. <laughs> it was his favorite story. So you ask him to divide this into 14 steps and illustrate. So she has a favorite story, a very dynamic, moving picture book. They take it back home with them. <laughs> you, you, you don't have to buy it. You could make it. Very nice. Number of fascinating, this is a very nice black butterfly. Just a fruity, fruity straw, an ordinary straw, some tape, and a bit of extremely nice. And uh, most of our toys, I think, if uh, children are always interested in things which move, which are dynamic. A sitting duck is a sitting duck, right? They get bored of it but pretty quickly. But something with a dynamic element, now this is, you can just say this is a man who is doing just some exercise. Well, three minutes to do this. Very nice exercise. Just a piece of any old cardboard box. Uh, this is a broomstick, a bit of a fruity straw tape. Fascinating questions. You know, today the world is talking all about, everyone is talking about artificial intelligence. 40% of the jobs have been lost <laughs> in 2020. Uh, robotics, robotics, the big craze amongst the elite today. There is no warp and weft in this country. How can you embroider? <laughs> there is no warp and weft. <laughs> you can talk about embroidery, you can talk about these fine things. If there is a web of <laughs> nothing exists. But our kids in our reality must start with toys like this, which are very, very cost effective, which they can 
the most of the materials all around you. You just have to look. Science is not hard. I've been to 3,000 schools. In every school I say that I'd like to see your science lab. Because if you see a science lab, it tells you everything about this. You find a spick and span science lab, pure, it's gleaming. But if you, your perceptive go, go close, you see a grime of dust among the test tubes. Because all this fancy glass there, plastic there, <coughs> was meant for the inspectors, not the kids. I was telling uh, Umaji that my, my nephew, son, goes to some green boat high, very high end school. Yesterday night I was talking to him. He's gone to class 10. He was looking, writing his practical book. And he said, I have never visited the science lab. This is the reality of all these so called elite schools. That this is the truth about them. Right? But uh, children must start with this. And parents have a major role to play in that. It's not, you know, most people think that we have subcontracted because the school charges such a high fee, it's international, you know, <laughs> tag attached to it. It must be really, this is subcontracting. You can subcontract your house but not your child. Right? We have given birth to a child and our stake in a child, no teacher, no principal, no, no corporation can have as a stake a parent has in a child. So we must take the onus of, of investing our time and energies of the child. My wife is a counselor for many years. If, if you see a problem child in the school, it's a problem parents. You can trace it back to the problem parents. Both parents working in IT companies, you're making a billion dollars, making so much of money. They have no time for the child at all. You ask them, why are you so rich? Why are you so rich? Why are you so rich? They have no time for their kid. They have no time for their kid. So this is subcontracting. This, is, this doesn't help. You don't go very far in life with subcontracting. It's your child. You've got to invest in your child. Oh, this is something. Madhun Naya, when he was the chairman of this, so he visited our center. We've had, we had, I must tell you, we have had 25 FRSs visiting our center, about six Nobel laureates visiting our small center. This one was very facility. So he, I said, we have a lunch, we have a rocket too. <laughs> it was quite surprised. This is a PVC pipe, a small PVC pipe. Now, you must have eaten this chana murmura, and they make a bone out of it and put chana murmura in that. So you make a big one like this, put it inside this. Over here, you put a mark. Because only this much will, and cut it. You've got the exact size of this. So this cone goes in beautifully. And now, see, I'm going to, I'm just going to blow it in. <laughs> it's a very nice logic, this is it. Right? <laughs> you could try it out. But this is a, a very old toy. This is like the boat. Old time carpenters used to use a board like this. This is like the board. Uh, this is an old sketch pen uh, with a hole and a, uh, and a thread screw. Here is a reefer with a parrot on one side, a cage on the other. Now I'm going to just remove the yank of the thread. You can see the thread over here. <coughs> uh, I've just rotated by 90, by 180 degrees. You can see a cross in the thread. And I put it in. Now what, what's happening is that the thread is going in, take a round of the reefer and comes out. Now if I move the bow, right now you see the, the, the parrot in the cage, the parrot in the cage. And if I move it fast enough, it, it will look like that the parrot is encaged. Right? Uh, it's a very nice, it's, it's, a, it's a best of the vision and a very nice experiment and much better than doing with, the, with, the, with your palms. But this also converts straight line motion into rotary motion. You see, the, the bow is moving left and right, but the straw is spinning. It's a great machine. With the board drill was based on this concept. And if you're not interested in science, it's not the end of the world. You can put this in curds and make butter. It's a very nice channel. <laughs> very nice channel. <laughs> a couple of things. This is the old brushes are not for throwing. My wife is always throwing them, but I always collect them, retrieve them from the cathedral pit. So we just just tie them together. We just put a point, and this is extremely nice balancing toy. Right. The bristles, they interlock into each other, right? And you just need to put a toothpick, like you put this on the top of a... This is like a very nice balancing toy. Very nice balancing toy. You could just spin it like this. Well, many, many years back, uh, this is this is a story from the life of Montessori. Many of you know that Montessori spent five years in India. She came during the Second World War. 
and came from the enemy country, <laughs> Italy, and she was stranded in this Tukmani uh, Arundel uh, who gave her a refuge in Kalashitra. She, was, she trained. Many of my friends' mothers were trained by Montessori. And uh, five years, she gave 12 uh, interviews to talks on all India radio, which have been, uh, you can see them on my website, Montessori. Montessori, by training, was a doctor. Italy's first lady medical doctor. Uh, she was not a pedagogue. And she started doing her work in the slums of Italy and came up with amazing theories, which are still very scientific, still being used 100 years down. She had made a, something called as a, this is a true life, a true story from life, what is it? Uh, one of one, while she was working, there was a priest who was very fascinated by what, what Montessori was doing. Every Sunday after Mass, he would come down to the school. And he was a good old Samaritan, so he would bring toffees and lollipops and biscuits for the children and distribute them. One day when the priest came, Montessori took him to a corner. She had designed many teaching aids. One was called as a post box. Just a cubicle box with a circle where the child posts a ball, there's a triangle, so you push in a prism inside this. Called, called as a post, post box. Many, many variations are still available. So this Montessori was trying to demonstrate the powers of concentration within a child. This girl was totally absorbed in all that. Montessori asked the other children that you make a circle round her and sing a nursery rhyme aloud to disturb her concentration. This girl didn't even look up. Then Montessori lifted her, put her on the table. And as soon as this girl perched, took a perch, she again observed which blood goes into which slide. That day the priest had got a big box of biscuits. He gave every child a biscuit. He gave this girl also a biscuit. She looked at it, put in the rectangle. <laughs> Hundred years back, Montessori demonstrated ye lalach se, you know, tambo se, you know, these medals and these, uh, these uh, you stars, children don't, all these <laughs> bribes children don't learn. Children are new to the world, they the, the greatest choice to discover how this goddamn world works. This is the greatest joy for a child. So these are, these are, uh, uh, all these bribes are not good enough. You know, a good certificate or a medal, uh, they don't work. This is, what, this is the message you want to say. Meanwhile, 30 years back there was the advertisement, National Association for the Blind. And they said the, the challenge is very appropriate teaching aids for preschool blind children. <laughs> I've always thought that the, the most a gift of Hawaii slipper is a gift to education. <laughs> to be very, but <laughs> it's because it's very workable. So we have just three minutes to cut this. Please you scrub it clean once, three minutes to uh, this is very rough over here, this is smooth over here, different kinds of textural fields, and uh, you can put a, a, a white, you know, because if, when you cut it with a knife, no rubber dust falls out, so there's not fit, so a blind child can actually feel it. In, in a wooden puzzle, if you cut it with a fret saw, there will be sawdust, it will lose fit, and you need a backup plate, not in rubber. And so you have great advantages, you could see the, uh, a black on a, on a white background, white on a, all these things, no sharp edges anywhere. So we made 40 puzzles using the Hawaii slipper. Very workable material. Very, we, don't, we must use our heads. <coughs> the, the, the worst thing which the Britishers did was to leave behind a colonized mind. Unless you love your own reality, it's very unlikely that you create something original. Right? You'd be a copycat of something. No, there are good things to copy. But apply your mind, look at your own reality. And you can do something really different. One or two more things I'd like to show you, and I'll end. This is not designed by us, this is the best thing I have to show you. This is called as a touching slate. It's a slate made for blind children. This is devised by a couple, uh, Ashok Dilip Bhatt and his wife, Pragya, in Ahmedabad. Dilip works for Isro. When the son was born, 18 years back, he was born. We should be challenged. This is a gift to humanity. They told me the story that uh, they had made a map, they bought a map of India and put fevicol with a toothpick on the outline and they stuck a cord so that the child could uh, put the finger and trace the outline of India. They said at 11 o'clock we were going to sleep at night. There was some velcro and all kinds of threads were sticking to the velcro. This is a common experience. And the idea came from there. Now this is this is strips of velcro. The velcro has got loops and hooks. This is only the hook part, the loop part we discovered. So there are millions of these nylon hooks over here. 
And this is more like a wool dispenser. Uh, we start here. It, this is rubber and this pen goes inside this. It just sticks and now you can just feel the arm. Very amazing blinds. India has 12 million blinds. The largest number of blinds in the world happens to be in our country. It's almost, it's half the population of Australia. That's the extent of blindness in our country. We're not able to provide vitamin A, which is essential, grains, calories. It's every, every good blind school uses this now. This is extremely cost effective. This is free then. This is my friend, we got uh, lots of inquiries. Uh, there was a teacher in a school in, in, in Bangkok, a special school for the visually impaired. And he made these slates for all the blind children in school. And which was a thumping success. He got a corporate sponsorship at all the blind schools in Bangkok. In, in Bangkok. And so he asked his permission. Dilip Kumar was very gracious to give the permission. But this is a very, very nice. But in the end, two more things. This is a, you know, we use a lot, there's a book, I've got a book called his Little Toys, National Trust, it comes in many languages, eight, nine languages, which is largely on the tetrapack. This is 20 years back, the tetrapacks, which is coming. It's a horrendous material from the point of view of the environment, because there are four or five layers fused together. 